Hello Beauty News family, welcome to another sit down chit chat video. Today we want to talk about something that has kind of popped up a little bit recently. It feels like there's something in the water. We're going to talk about makeup brand closures. So we recently saw both JD Glow and Suva Beauty announce closures to a degree. Um, and we talked about it in an episode of Beauty News. And after that, we heard that Beauty Bakery is shutting down. So we thought we would have a little chat about it. And then we thought we would take you guys over some of our predictions of brands that we think could close in the future, whether that be because uh, we think they're actually in trouble or just because they're not putting in the effort and they may become redundant. I do want to say that I think like, okay, probably over the past few years, I think that like, I know a few brands did blame the pandemic for reasons why they closed, but I do feel like this is just a natural culling of brands when we have seen probably the biggest increase in makeup brands and new brands that have come onto the market in the past 10 years than any other time in history. So I just feel like it's a very, very inflated market. And this is just a yeah. natural way to like, okay, if, if a brand's not succeeding, then obviously it's a smart move to close it. But what we have seen recently, so the three brands that we saw um, very recently closed in, the, in March. Uh, they all had very different reasons. So JD Glow, they're actually rebranding. So they got in trouble for a violation. We'll have information on the screen. And they're actually rebranding to her artistry. So that brand will come back. I'm going to just go out on a limb and say, I really like JD Glow's makeup, but I, did, I, I don't think they make the right steps to becoming a bigger, more successful brand. It always felt very mix it in your kitchen, you know, pour, like squeeze it into tubes. And so Small it always brand. felt like the indiest of indies. So I, I don't know if her artistry is going to, is going to take off very well anyway, but it might be more of a hobby, whatever. When it came to super beauty, that was, it seemed like that was partly the owner's just time in life um, and re uh, assessing things, but also uh, with the Morphe store closures, that would have been one of the biggest points of selling their products. And since they all closed throughout the US, um, I think it would have taken a big hit to the company. So I feel like that was a, a couple of reasons. And then when it came to Beauty Bakery, this was another one where it seemed like just lost interest when it comes to the owner. And I think when it comes to some sort of smaller brands, um, this is where the owner really has a huge say in it. So if the owner feels like yes. they've lost passion or they're just not that interested, uh, instead of selling it or having someone else come and sort of run it while they just sit back and take mm. the proceeds, it feels like when someone's lost genuine interest, they're just like, I'm closing it. And that's what seems to happen with Beauty Bakery. There was a big, very um, biblical <laughs> announcement yeah. about that, which yeah. I'm just gonna say as, someone who is an atheist it made me go i'm glad i never bought from beauty bakery because that was a weird turn of events she's really had like a come to jesus moment as it appears based on the announcement that they made um on i think they made it on their website and mm -hmm. on instagram uh, i read the whole thing and it is it it's literally a paragraph a short paragraph about the brand is closing the end bible and verse bible verse <laughs> and then it was a sermon yeah um and look uh, i'm all for people following what their i guess their heart tells them to do like if they're not feeling something and they want to make a change and they think that that's what's right for their life i think you should absolutely do that um i also don't really identify with the whole you know um sermon part of the statement but i think you know if that's what she wants to do that's what she's got to do and she, i don't think she has passion for the brand i also don't think that she's had it for a while and i think that shows mm -hmm. in their recent releases which Absolutely. i don't even know what they were because so boring it was just like it just it wasn't the passion wasn't there anymore that's how it appeared to me. What I thought was interesting about that statement though, is it really shows that the owner can have very strong, whether it's um, 
religious, political, whatever beliefs, yes. but they really do tamper them down to make the brand as accessible as possible. And it's just yes. a really interesting that it's like, we're closing down and now I'm just going to like, bleh, like Let just it all word out. vomit you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just preach yes. to you, which I was just like this, where, what, huh? So that was an interesting one. So all of these have been quite different reasons. Um, mm. There was actually another announcement that was in the last month as well. So yeah. uh, from Huda Beauty. So Huda actually got on, um, her, in her YouTube channel and made a video talking about how she's um, been reinstated as the CEO of Huda Beauty. So apparently I didn't even realize she stepped down a few years ago um, yeah. and now she sort of it was really regretted that decision, wanted to take control of it again. She thought that it was sort of killing the brand in the direction they were going. Um, mm. And what she did actually announce in that, which it hasn't been officially like there's no statement or anything, but in that video, she did say that um, she's closing Glowish, which is like the sister brand to Huda. And she's actually going to, I feel like incorporate the popular products potentially into the Huda line. So yeah, that is a brand that's closing, them. but, and it's really interesting though, because I've actually seen some really good reviews of the products and they mm. made it into a lot of people's like top, um, uh, products of last year, I know that Nikki Tutorials had one and I remember looking up this powder and going, oh, that looks really beautiful. And then going, oh, it's actually sold out and it's, oh, it's been pulled from Sephora Australia. Oh, what's happening? Mm. And it's like, it was just like really weird timing, but hopefully they bring out the good products just in the official sort of line and sort of streamline yeah. um, the branding because I think it was getting a bit confusing because they've got the fragrance line, the skincare, two makeup brands. It was getting a bit, yeah. a bit yeah. much. Was Glowish the like more natural yeah. version of Huda Beauty? And that did cut like when I think about that brand and Huda being like we're phasing it out. And also, Kat, you, I think you mentioned, um, I'm not sure if we talked about it in the first video that we did when we come back. Mm -hmm. I feel like we um, we were gonna talk about it or we did talk about it. Um, Glowish kind of not being really yeah. available online yeah. anymore. And it's interesting, I also didn't know that Huda had sort of given up her position, like her pole position at the company. But looking back on that, obviously Glowish has come from, um, you know, the new management that was probably their idea. And Huda's gone, this is not actually, it doesn't really align mm -hmm. with our brand. And it's 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 got to go I, and I think it's great that she's sort of taken her position back mm -hmm. and she's going to you know drive the brand again because the brand did so well and I, I feel like Huda is one of those brands that has stayed relevant yeah even through the craziness of the pandemic and the changes with social media and stuff like that so I'm quite excited to see what she's going to do with it and I do love that She's still going to absorb those really popular glowish formulas into her brand, mm -hmm. but also streamline things. Because I remember when glowish was announced, I was like, that's crazy. Like how many brands do you need to have within another it, brand? Like it just felt like they were spreading themselves too thin. And again, yes. it sort of confuses the, um, the consumer as well, because you mm -hmm. go, well, which one is better, that powder or that powder? Like, what are you yeah. telling me? So That's right. I think yeah. it, it's probably yeah a smart move, um, just consolidating it all and making it a little bit more, um, make a lot more sense. And I do agree with you. I think that despite everything that's gone on in the industry, they just keep going strength to strength. So I think I think mm. that's probably, I, I, yeah. watch this space. I'm, I'm curious to see what they do now. I agree, I agree. I've got my eye on Huda. It, I'm interested. Mm -hmm. Um, some other things that I think we should talk about real quickly is the pandemic related closures. So these are the ones that blamed the pandemic pretty much. Yes, specifically blamed the pandemic and I believe actually closed down while the yes. pandemic was happening. So Becca Cosmetics was probably, I personally feel was like, the biggest one. The big one. Um, the big, they, the big, what the, what the, what the fuck? What the? <laughs> yeah. The, look, I, I felt like Becca was still quite popular at mm -hmm. the time, but apparently not. And I, I think the thing about Becca is they had all of their eggs in one highlighter basket. And these are large highlight products and it takes a long time to use them up. They also had a multitude of them available. And once you own, you know, 
20 highlighters, unless you're going to get rid of them all and buy more, it's not really a repurchasable product, you know, like... Also, sure. I, I do want to say they did come out with a lot of different shades, but a lot of the really interesting ones were limited edition and not available and everywhere. And they never came so back. They Correct. really flogged a dead horse when it came to what they considered the shades that they wanted you to buy. But then when it yes. came to the shades that people wanted to buy, they a lot of them weren't available. And I do think them. Becca was also one of those situations where they spread themselves too thin. Obviously, they had foundations. Obviously, they had every makeup item, but they also had the skincare items as well. And, and it did... Yes. I think it was just one of those things where it's like this is probably too hard to maintain long term now when it comes to becca like they're still around mm. in ghostly form i do yeah, find that yeah. there i've seen comments where people don't quite understand what actually happened some i've seen a few people say that they think that smashbox bought becca and incorporated them it's not the case they are both owned by estee lauder so what estee lauder did was decide that we're closing down becca but because we own the formulas we're actually going to release them under smashbox which they probably assumed is the closest alignment or the best fit for those um formulations they actually since like i think they just released it was under eye corrector and champagne pop highlighter since then they've actually released newer like different shades of the becca highlighters in the smashbox range as well so i think they're just going to be slowly trickling in more and more because i think people still want them i think becca was a sad situation because i think people sort of I almost, they took it for granted. Like they wanted stuff. They're like, oh, I like that. I like that foundation. I like that, that under eye concealer thing. I like the highlighters, but they're like, oh, I can buy that next year. I can buy that when I need to. And the thing is That's that it, right. it, they didn't real. Like, I think if people knew that they were in trouble, people would have actually rallied to the cause and started buying more regularly. That's just my thought. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah I think that's probably one of the saddest ones. Um, and people still talk about missing them and people still use their products. So I said it recently, I miss Becca because they did make some fantastic products. But I just think that the, the products that they were famous for, it was a hype train. And the train, like past the station i do agree but however how popular would have their would their um cheek and lip tints and their oh, liquid right highlighters be right now oh, i've still got one of their liquid yeah. highlighters their liquid highlighters were phenomenal. perfection they were yeah. so good yeah. So, they did. They made some fantastic products. Yeah. I'm not going to deny that. Yeah, I think if they held on a bit longer, they would have become relevant in a different for a different thing. So I, I think do, it's a shame. Yeah, I do also think that some of their releases towards the end were getting a little bit like cuckoo. Yeah. They released that um, clear foundation, which no, it was it was a silicon primer. It was a, to try and market that as a foundation was. That was dumb. You're so dumb. I feel like that was a, a move of a desperate brand. Like that was the product itself. Yes. I think potentially, okay, they were making it because they're like, okay, this can blur and give you that blurred effect mm. without makeup. And maybe they were developing it for the right reasons. But I think the way they were trying to push it, um, they were it was it, it, yeah. it was, it, it was desperate and, and it didn't mm. work. So I, yeah. I do think that was a shame. Uh, another brand that closed during the pandemic was Bite Beauty. Now, mm. Bite Beauty is an interesting one. So they started with their um, Bite Beauty Lip Lab. So you can go in and you can formulate or not formulate your own lipstick because they had the lipstick base, but you could choose your finish, your, the scent and the color and they would make it for you and you'd have your own like take away your little custom, custom lipstick. lipstick. Yep. Um, now they still exist. They've taken the bite beauty name off it and that ended up eventuating to a brand that was predominantly lip based now that obviously bite beauty the name came from they were using um edible <laughs> yeah ingredients. ingredients that were safe to be consumed which to be Correct. fair all lipstick ingredients it goes in your mouth and around your mouth yeah. it's safe to be consumed so bite be. like again you're, you're that was a bit of a shitty sort of 
implying that other things are toxic when it's not. So with Bite, they had two products that were really popular, the Amu Amuse Bouche lipsticks and the Agave lip balm. And people were going back and buying multiples of it. It was their staple, they loved it. Then they reformulated them to be vegan and I think it was like natural and all that kind of planty shit. Yes. And then what happened was they actually made them not very good and they discontinued what made them popular. And that was their nail in the coffin. And I'm just mm. going to say, like, I don't think this brand is in trouble, but I think Glossier has is risking doing that by getting rid yeah. of their lip balm, like the, the original uh, balm.com and reformulating it to vegan because everyone I've heard has, that has tried both is saying the new one is not worth the money and they're not going to buy it again. And I feel mm. like that could be a tipping point where they could become the next bite if they don't, if they're not careful. Yeah. I know what you're saying there. I would, uh, I agree. I don't think Glossier is going to close down like, tomorrow or announce bankruptcy but i don't think that they are potentially doing as well as we may assume for over 10 years glossier just stuck to their little corner of the world and have recently like recently they became available in australia and, and worldwide Should and worldwide. worldwide and i just wonder if that's like we need a bigger customer base to see if we can Yes. Float this sinking ship. I do Just think that. Theory, but they also no got rid of their of that, CEO. But, they yeah. got rid of their CEO. They got a new they CEO. Did. So they I'm, got a I'm, new CEO. I'm also wondering, did that person just move on or was there a reason where they're like, okay, we're yeah. kicking you out as CEO because you're not doing yeah. a very good job. Like, we don't, I don't know that information. So, yeah. but I do think that they're a brand that's not going to close anytime soon. But if they keep going the way they're going, they're going to be just like bite. Um, yeah. And the last brand that closed sort of for pandemic reasons mm -hmm. was Clarisonic. Now, Clarisonic yeah. was the brush head. They tried to do the makeup brush head thing, um, like the not exfoliating, but cleaning the, brush head I'll, thing. The Sonic the cleaning. The Sonic cleaning thing. Yeah. I think the problem with that brand was that they were, that they were really popular when they first launched because it was very innovative and new. And then people just copied the technology and, but then yep. put cheaper versions out there. So I just think they ended up having too much competition in their space and they were too, they were holding onto that Lux label. It was a mm. real shame though. They had some really good skincare, but they never pivoted to being a skincare brand. They could have. <sighs> so that was a shame. They really, I think they messed up big time. The problem with Clarisonic is their tools are very, very expensive. Yes. However, they do last a long time. I've got a Clarisonic that I've just pulled out recently. I hadn't charged it for like three friggin' years or used it. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I might try it. My skin's dry and I need an exfoliate and I haven't got any exfoliants. It's still turned on. I could yeah. not believe that it was holding a charge. They are, their quality builds, but they were so, so expensive. expensive. Their brush also, heads, like you, you had to buy a replacement brush head, which they tell you like replace it every three months or something. It was like a, like a good that. chunk of buying a new one. It was, they Correct. were too expensive. They mm -hmm. needed to drop their prices because there were other brands that had taken that technology, not the spinning ones that were like the really no. cheap crappy ones, but the no. oscillating but thing. The oscillation. Were, yeah, the yeah. brand, there were other brands that, that did that and they were selling them for half the price, which meant that yeah. Clarisonic could be doing the same and they, they just wanted to maintain that luck sort of image and that yes. killed them at the end. But also, it's that is, oh, I'm just gonna say it, that's a dumb business move and they should have known that. The way that you stay afloat as a brand is by having repeat customers. Mm -hmm. And nobody is coming back to buy a four or five hundred dollar tech for your skin every three, six, or twelve months. Mm -hmm. What they needed to do was get into promoting that skincare and showing how good it was. And they did genuinely, they made really nice skincare they products yeah, yeah. and i heard nothing about them until the brand had already closed yep yep that's fair so they sunk their own ship if you ask me i do agree uh let's run through some other closures so this is not anything that was pandemic related it's not anything in the last month but it's sort of in between that wedge in between mm -hmm. do you want to start with the big one yeah let's start with the big one mark jacobs <laughs> <laughs> so i think I don't know if people felt like they saw this coming. I didn't. 
I think people, there's two camps with Marc Jacobs. People think they're boring and basic and why are they still around? I would never buy them. And then there's the quiet consumer who goes and buys Marc Jacobs because it's been around forever and they know that the formula is great and they have heaps of fantastic products. Um, I was in that category and I think there's a lot of brands that have been around for a really long time that some people might look at and go, why are they still around? It's because of the quiet consumer mm -hmm. who relies on them and they Which have re like repurchasable like, products. Yeah, but that's also why in this video we're not mentioning Mac. Whenever people talk no. about brands that they think are in trouble, Mac's people are always thinking down. Mac. No, no, there are so many quiet consumers that just buy their Mac products, use them, and they just mm -hmm. move on with their life without yeah. having to promote it on, on Instagram or TikTok or something. So yeah. I think Mac is going nowhere. And I think I do agree with you, like Mark Jacobs shouldn't have gone anywhere except there was a contractual thing so Correct. that was the, the main That's reason right. so mark jacobs uh reached the end of their contract with kendo who was manufacturing their products and stocking them in sephora uh, so koti came along and said hey we would like to make cosmetics for you and the owners of the Marc Jacobs IP said, sure, let's do it. So we're expected to see a relaunch of Marc Jacobs Beauty via Coty in 2025? Yeah, that's Is what it? they... Is it? I think... I think the earliest that they predicted. I reckon it's going to take a bit longer. But, gonna, I think it'll take longer yeah, as well. But it, yeah. it did take them a couple of years to, to actually announce that. So, um, you know, there was a lot of just dead space of what's happening. Yes. Is it and coming closure, back? The closure was very quick. It yeah. was announced, it was all heavily discounted, and then it was done. But they didn't announce that they were actually closing. They just they no. just cleared out the stock. And so it left yeah. people thinking, are they repackaging? Are they What's reformulating? On? What's yeah. going on? And people just assumed that when everything was sold out and they'd closed everything, and they haven't even closed their Instagram yet. Like their, their Instagram no, just is... No, it's still there. It's still there. So it, it, yeah. it left people just... They didn't have the closure because um, it, yeah, it wasn't properly announced. They just had to assume what was going on. So there's a lot of conspiracy theories. A brand that did a similar thing um, was KKW Beauty and Fragrance and also Kylie. So mm -hmm. they sold to Coty, but there was a court case because... It was, I think, assumed that Coty spent so much money buying these brands to get ColourPop sort of manufacturing information. Um, so they ended up getting the court to say, no, you can't pass on that information. So they had to start from scratch. Coty with Kylie and Kim had to start from scratch without being able to take the formulas and the manufacturing process over from Seed Beauty. So both brands have sort of come back. Um, Kylie came back quicker as Ka Kylie Cosmetics, the same name. Kim has brought out a makeup brand just recently called Skim. Was that what, that's what it's called, yeah? It is in fact called Skin. And if you'd like to play along at home, I suggest taking a shot for every time we call it skim. Yes, yeah. So I it's think not so. KKW, which yeah. you know she's no longer a West and whatever, whatever. So she she called it skim, and the fragrance line has gone. So um, it did shake it up a lot, and they did disappear. But they're they're sort of back in the the makeup sort of field. They're probably not earning as much as they once did, except for the payout that they got when they sold it to Coty. That was yes, that's right. Yeah. I, I also will say about these brands, um, I, I don't necessarily think that they're super safe, specifically KKW, oh, sorry, Skin. Was it Skin or Skim? Skim, Skin. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe Is it skin. skin? I don't know. Whatever. It's on the Look, screen. You know. We'll put it on the screen. <laughs> um, I don't necessarily think that the brand is on safe, solid ground. Let's just put it that way. I'm pretty sure I've read that Kim is trying yeah. to like buy it back. get out of the contract and buy it back. So we'll see what happens there. I think it's very interesting. It's the most interesting thing that I've ever seen happen with the Kardashians and the Jenners. I agree. It's like this, the sale and resale and sale again of their beauty company. And the, and the legal battle and all that kind of stuff. So we could even Correct. do a deep dive yes. just about that because that was an interesting We process. could actually, yeah. yeah. All right. I think um, I'd like to talk about another one that I don't know. You guys can tell us if you think that, the, like if you saw this coming. 
Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. So she launched her brand with lipsticks, lumpy lipsticks. <laughs> lipstick gate. Yeah. It was, it was a big, big issue uh, in the beauty sphere at the time. And then we didn't hear anything from her for quite some time on that front. Eventually, she did release some highlighters. other products, highlighters, and uh, it then slowly started to come out that uh, Morphe had sort of supported the relaunch of products. Um, and after Morphe announced their bankruptcy and it was purchased um, by basically lenders of the brand um, she also announced closures yeah. of all of her brands not just her beauty line yeah so with this um, one though she announced the closure of her like leisure wear and her jewelry line first and then yes. a, a month or so later she made an announcement that the cosmetic brand was closing it was an interesting yes. move because it was in like um stores and stuff so it, it obviously was they'll make moving a fair amount of stock this one just mm. seems like she lost interest so she did make I a think statement this was twofold yeah, yeah she made a statement saying that she's sort of moving on and her she's focusing on her mental health and she's doing well and whatever i mm. think what happens with jacqueline hill is that she jumps in with both feet into a project whether it's her youtube channel whether it's a whatever mm. and then she very very quickly jumps out and i think that's probably the way yeah. she operates her businesses and why she i'm surprised she still has money to be honest but she yeah, she's just not consistent. And I think that mm. makes for a very bad um, sort of whether she's a brand owner or a face of a brand or the creative, whatever behind the brand. Um, I think mm. consistency matters and she just did not have it. She's very, very flaky. Yes. And she's either yeah. very, very passionate and very, very into it or out of it. And I think that's an example yeah. of what happened with. I think they could still be operating to this very day and doing OK if she wasn't checked out. I agree. I think Morphe was keeping her brand afloat. Mm -hmm. I think she was essentially just like the face of the brand and she let Morphe run everything. Maybe she ticked some boxes to approve products being released, but I don't think she was actually like, this is my little baby and I'm, you know, sending out products no. and keeping on top of everything. Um, so I think without Morphe's support, when they had to close down, she was probably like, no point. too hard. Yeah. I don't want to do it. And I don't, I don't want to work with Morphe's people that I don't to, know but... and that aren't kissing my ass and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so <laughs> Pro yeah potentially correct. Yeah. yeah. Another brand that closed um, at the end of 2022 was Lila B. Now, I mm. again, I, they closed down the Instagram, so I can't find their announcement. But essentially, it was sort of like the brand had run its course. Now, this was a quite a luxury brand um, that was like a natural brand. I had heard that their products went off pretty quickly. Um, but it almost feels like they put a lot of effort into the look of the packaging. It almost looked like a nice little white pebble. Um, and I mm -hmm. just feel like it was sort of snobbery makeup where people were just like... Um, <laughs> You know, I think they were targeting sort of rich beachy people who just want like a little tint mm. to put on when they're, you know, having their champagne on the beach. And like it just wasn't something that was popular on a wider scale. And no. I feel like they probably tried to grow like they're in Mecca in Australia. I think they tried to grow internationally probably too quickly um, and it had run its course, which I'm not mad at because I did not care for the brand. Yeah, I I just was never really interested mm. in the brand. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that they didn't survive. And also, you know, it's one of those things, your products can look as good as you want them to, but you the, the stuff inside is the most important. If the cream it has to be If the cream brush good. is go, going off in like 6 months, like it's 3 it's months, not, yeah. Not like good. And, and that's the thing, you can promote your product as much as you want on social media. The most famous person on the face of the earth can say that it's good and people will go and buy it, which is great. But if they're not coming back to repurchase it, you're fucked. Exactly right. Um, Cover FX is our next one. So these guys actually sold in 2020 to a company called AS Beauty or As Beauty and as Beauty is, uh, I mean, it's a 
company that I'm not really familiar with. I had never heard of them before. And I'm just going to Google them again now because Laura Geller. I wanted to... Laura Geller, Julep Beauty and Mally Beauty are the brands that they own. Um, now, Cover FX essentially just went dormant um, since they were purchased. And they had a relaunch in August of 2023, but then did their like hard launch in February of this year. They had a lot of influences and ads on social media. I believe it was um, on Valentine's Day, uh, promoting their products and they're back. So if you are wondering like where Cover FX went, um, like I said, they hibernated for a little while and now they're back. And will they make it? I don't think I so. I don't know. Look, they might fall into a different oh. audience of that Laura Geller, Maybe. of that like buy on sort of like shopping network sort of vibe. Um, they did yeah. redo the packaging of most products. Um, they did do the redo the logo to me. It feels like sort of TVSN type makeup. Like it doesn't feel like yeah. what it used to be. So I like mm. they might find a different audience for it, which might mm. be a loyal audience, probably a more mature mm. audience, but I don't think they're going to come back to the level that they were at at all. No way, yeah. no how. I feel like you'll start to see them a lot in like beauty boxes mm -hmm. because doesn't like Laura Geller um, Julep, yeah. Mally Beauty, they do pop up a lot in yes. like international beauty, but they're international for us because they're like US based. Um, and like, we don't actually have access to those brands as far as I'm aware, do we? On, not in Australian stores. No, no, no. They, you have to order them can online. Can you buy them online? Yeah, you can order them online, yeah. but you have yeah. to generally pay hefty amount of shipping. Yeah. yeah. But also so, those are the type of brands that they will have quite high priced points on their products but then they'll often have like 60 percent off sales so it's one of those the marketing is very pushy and their emails like i remember i ordered from laura gala and i literally got emailed like three times a day oh i hate that with like That's and there was bad. a new sale like every two days it was mm. maddening like to the point where i will not buy from them again just simply because yeah. that was so frustrating and i also have a cat meowing ignore her You've got dinner in four hours. Anyway, whatever. <gasps> Don't say the D word too loud. Yeah. My dog will hear. And she'll be like, oh, my God. Yeah. Um, let's just quickly talk about some bankruptcies that happened. Yeah. Um, we'll put some articles on the screen so you can see the details. The first one is Revlon actually filed for bankruptcy. Um, yeah, so they uh, so ended up having to ha hand control over to the lenders. So the people that they owed money mm. to. This is the same as Morphe. Um, so June yeah. 2022, they end up having to be transferred over to the lender. So it's owned by someone else for the first time in like yes. donkey's years. This is a super old brand, mm -hmm. but they are saying that they're uh, you know very dedicated to make it work. So Revlon shouldn't go anywhere. It's just a really interesting yeah. situation. Same thing happened with Morphe. So Morphe uh, filed for bankruptcy as well. And that's when they closed all their stores in the US. So they... Still available in Australia because probably because our rental, um, especially our retail rental, it, it's it's really hard to get out of the leases. So that I reckon that would be yes, one thing. Um, I reckon, and it's probably a long term lease and uh, whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. But anyway, they ended up having to again transfer it to lenders to write off a six hundred ninety million dollar debt in twenty twenty three. Now I will put on the screen roughly what it was valued at prior to that. So in their heyday, I think they were worth um, billions of dollars. And then last year they had to transfer uh, for to write off six hundred and ninety million dollar debt. So that shows you how much they had fallen from grace in that sort of couple of years. Yeah, and they really, I mean, they've obviously overextended themselves with the stores wildly. and everything. Yeah, yeah, but I think Morphe, and again, this is one that we can do a deep dive into because it's a fascinating story. They had a marketing strategy mm. where they were using influencers to push products on people mm. which and spread awareness which is fine like it is but the they relied on that so heavily that and they relied on problematic people so much that when those mm. people had falls from grace so jeffrey star um you know uh all those people you know jacqueline for example um uh, james charles uh they were all controversial people that 
were good at selling products, but when they had a fall from grace, then the brand also had a fall from grace. And that's why the that's right. value went from up to here down to crapola. Um, so that was yeah. a bit of a strange one. The next one is BH Cosmetics. I forgot all about and they, them. I, same. So did I. So they filed, filed for bankruptcy in January of 2022 and Revolution Beauty came along and went, yep. hello, partner. I mean, nemesis. Yep. They, just, they, they were just, they were getting rid of competition. That's all they were doing. They were. That's correct. So uh, they purchased... BH Cosmetics for $3.9 million in March of 2022. So they snapped them right up. Mm -hmm. I know that there were some fans of BH Cosmetics out there. They had some, you know, particular products that they really loved and they were hoping, I don't know if it, it's like if Revolution Beauty has actually done this, but they were hoping that they would absorb some of their formulas and we'd they see should. improvement in Revolution Beauty because Revolution Beauty, it was like, it's, uh, yeah, I was going to say cheap and cheerful, but I can't even say that and I feel like it's being honest. Um, yeah, they are just a pump the products out kind of brand. So Will Revolution Beauty survive? We don't know, but um, BH Cosmetics certainly didn't, mm -hmm. and Revolution ate them while they were dying. Yeah. Uh, one that's an Australian one, this is an interesting one, which I, if the, if we didn't talk about it here, it'd be a brand that I'm saying is, is going. Napoleon mm -hmm. Purtis. So Napoleon Purtis is a makeup artist. He thinks his shit doesn't stink, but I tell you, it stinks to high heavens. Um, this guy is, has such a God complex. Um, he's trying to make his daughter a model and it's just fucking, well, he's obnoxious. Anyway, um, they were very popular back in the time where I was in high school and people were going to like um, counters to get their like essentially prom makeup done and stuff like that. And yeah. the, it, since then, they actually, I remember... <laughs> Napoleon Purtis talking about how, and this was to a training his, his staff, that they do not want to pander to social media because they're um, makeup artists focus and they're focused on their clients. They're not focused on online marketing. Well, this is what happens, isn't it? Fucking N N mm. NP. Uh, so anyway, uh, they went into administration. Yep. This was uh, before the pandemic, just before the pandemic. And they were actually bought, uh, they were, they found investors, foreign investors. Mm. I still think that they're on the cusp of dying. So even though they've got so, yes, some investment so to keep them going for now that you see them now in shopping centers like little booths of people trying to shill fucking crappy makeup so yeah they're, they're, and you make a wide berth because you're scared that they're going to be like hi yeah. do you, you want to try, try this, this primer it's a, no, it's a crime not a crime and you're like get the fuck away from me you absolute <laughs> creepers uh, anyway ugh. but also i can see uh, there is something i just want to mention here cat made a note that they had withdrawn having shelves in david jones mm for a Priceline partnership, which is literally cheapening your brand. Yeah. Because David Jones is like a, a department store that is quite fancy and expensive. And Priceline does 50% off makeup sales. Yes, but I question if that was a desperate move and that was like, someone's gonna take them because I reckon they weren't being able to afford the counter I think, space I don't think they David were doing, Jones. Yeah, so I don't think they were again, doing well. I think a yeah. desperate move from a def desperate brand, but there we go. I think so. The last two that we're gonna talk about are L'Occitane, the American branch, and also the American branch of Kiko. So, uh, L'Occitane filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in January of 2021, um, and they had a $15 million in rent oh, arrears. Oh my god. <laughs> what oh on god. earth? And they say, they actually say it was fueled by the pandemic. Um, now, they are not closing down. They were granted approval of a restructuring plan. So we may see them bounce back. I'd say that in-store purchases are probably their like bread and butter, mm -hmm. but we'll see what happens with them. Yeah, with Kiko, this was back in 2019, um, similar thing, whereas the US branch um, went bankrupt and they ended up having to close the 24 stores. So uh, that's why if you can't find Kiko in the US, well, you can't find Australia either. I do also want to mention, this is not a bankruptcy thing, but, um, one brand that sadly left pretty much all international stores um, besides 
their location Shuramura, so Shuramura makeup mm. and Art of yeah. Hair. So Art of Hair last year pulled out of international stores, and then prior to that, their makeup range also pulled out of um, international stores. So you can only really get them, I think, in online. Yeah, online, but generally from J Japanese or Korean. Um, sites because yes. that's where they're still yeah. still available. All right, I think we should talk about some things that we or some brands that we think could be in trouble, could go south, could be gone skis um, in the future. Mm -hmm. Shall we do one for one, yes. Kat? Do you want to start? I Let's will. Okay, it. the one that I think is on the biggest chopping block is Ilamasca. Now Ilamasca yeah. used to have stores pretty much worldwide almost and they were oh yeah they were global. they yeah. were really popular they were sort of that alternative brand similar to kvd before yeah kvd um and they were very popular um what ended up mm. happening was they sold i think it was 2017 or 2016 I, my note is wrong here um but they sold to the hut group and mm. um, ever since then, they pulled out of international stores. And uh, you you can see any international site that stocks them, um, they've got them like 80% off and they haven't been releasing new things for a, a long time. Uh, I feel like it's just a matter of clearing out stock and then they're just gonna disappear. So that's um, my one that to the point when we were actually researching this video, I felt like I had to check back every few days to see if there's been an announcement that they've closed because they are <laughs> such on the edge of closing. Oh, no. So that's my one. It's yeah. like, yeah. They're going to fade I off would, to the distance, but they, they're gone. They're gone. I would say that I agree with Kat. Um, uh, I, I feel like years ago, uh, they looked like they were dying a slow, slow death. Um, and I think it's going to be sad. They, they do have some nice products. And I feel like, look, here's where I think Illamasqua was trying to go. I think they were trying to be the Mac mm -hmm. of like the current times with the their UK beautiful based stores. And, Mac, yeah. Yeah. And they had like, they had a lot of products, um, huge, huge catalog of products. And I just don't, I don't think they could survive it long term, unfortunately. I reckon they could have if they had passion, but again, I think they just sold it and then they were just like, yeah. they, whoever bought it, the hut group were just like, I don't, I don't get this. We just bought it for the sake of I it. I don't, yeah, I don't think they survived the influencer um, influx no. of like 2016 to mm -hmm. current time. Um, and the reason why Mac has is because Mac already had a long-standing history Correct. with quiet consumers. Yep. Um, my first guess would be Glam Glow. I'm surprised. Are still they around, even to be still a thing? Yeah. Why are they still around? Now these guys are owned by Estee Lauder, and I do know they um, had a small restructuring of the team that works on Glam Glow, Smashbox, and there was another brand. Basically, they just reduced the team that was working on those brands. I don't think Glam Glow will survive the test of time. For one, their products aren't good enough for people to keep coming back and buying them over and over. And I think their heyday has gone. Look, I just don't. I, yeah. I agree. I think they were, became, they came on the market with that mud mask that had like the little dots of oil. Yes. Um, and I think yep. also that was really intriguing for a lot of people with oily skin or acne prone yes. skin. Now, I think we've learned now that <laughs> sucking the oils out is actually not the answer. So I think that people no, don't yeah. actually use that anymore. But then they also mm. tried to ride the wave of like stupid glittery colorful masks and it was a gimmick mm. and a gimmick like it was sort of like a they had this little bubble of like popularity and it's burst. So I don't, and they yes. were so expensive and their prices just kept going oh, up. Yeah. So yes. I agree yeah. with you. I'm surprised it's still around. I think any day yes. now they're going to be off. They'll be gone. Okay. My next one is Lime Crime. Now, again, we can do a video mm. about the history of Lime Crime. They were very colorful, very popular. Um, controversy not even going to touch on that because it is its own thing um Dodia ended up stepping down and disappearing Ooh. but i do feel like the brand's going to survive just not as a makeup brand mm. they have released bullet lipsticks in the past couple of years so like a blotted sort of 
matte colorful lipstick but I think where they have pivoted to is a hair dye hair care brand. So they are still going strong with their hair dye, but I think the makeup element is going to fizzle out or, and even now I wouldn't necessarily call them a makeup brand. I'll call them a hair color brand. So I think yeah. they're going to survive, yeah. but just not as a makeup brand. So that's my sort of disclaimer there. Man, I, I'm i just thinking back to like some of the lipsticks and stuff that I had from Lime Crime. They oh, I miss them. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just, I'm just going to say it. I miss them. Um, like you said, so much controversy there. It's really hard to sort of, um, for a time it was very hard to support the brand, but things have changed. I don't think they're ever really going to make a comeback though. I think no. it's like, unfortunately without Dodia, I just don't think that there's any vision at that company and I don't yeah. think they will survive it long term. Except for colorful, because they've got so many colorful hair dyes. Like they've got a huge. Oh yes, range. yeah. As I mean, yeah. But in makeup. terms of makeup, I think yeah. the, the yeah, ship great. has sailed. Um, my next one is Ofra, and uh, I mean also <sighs> yeah. controversy. Um, but again, I just feel like we're talking about a brand that is kind of similar to what happened with Becca. I agree. They've got, yeah, it's like highlight palettes, highlight central. And like the wrong type of highlighter. Own? It's not like a natural yeah, sort of glassy, not... glowy highlighter that people are into now. Mm -mm. It's that really metallic strip highlighter. Stripe. That they yeah. must have yeah. made their money back in like 2016 and they're just still <laughs> trying to like make fetch happen. And it's, it's not going to, it's not, it's yeah. not a thing anymore. So like no. I actually decluttered some of my, um, I think I've still got a palette that I'm like, do I try to use? I think I still yeah, have but that I, as well. I tried yeah. to use them because I was decluttering my um, highlighters a couple months ago. And I was just like, this is not flattering. And also the people no. that loved them when they were in their 20s are now in their 30s. And it doesn't look good. You can't wear them. It doesn't look no, good. You can't. I know. I, I think for me, like occasionally I'll put them on and I'm like, blast from the past, but this shouldn't be on mm. my face. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So yeah, like you know, I I totally get I get it, and I don't mm. think Ofra will survive the test of time. I agree. My next one is KVD Beauty. Now again, this is a whole controversy. It was Kat Von D Beauty, then it went to Kindness Vegan Doing Good Something Something Beauty. Um, I feel like um, they are holding on with like. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, I'd, look, I think they are releasing things that will make them survive. However, I feel like and, and in Australia and I know in other countries of, as well, they've actually been pulled out of Sephora stores. So that's... Yes, and they're only online Yeah, they're now. only online yep. now. So um, the fact that they were worldwide and people were celebrating when uh, Kat Von D was being released in their country, in their Sephora, now they're being pulled so the fact that that like yeah. that's where most people internationally bought their makeup from so the fact that they have to mm. buy it internationally yes it's still available to buy on their direct website but it's just a huge sign that they're downsizing otherwise they're not going to survive now can they survive yes. at this smaller scale possibly but it's not a good sign so i think they are on their last legs and i think part of it is like similar to lime crime um once kat von d lost interest and left and there was controversy and people sort of um, turned away from her. Um, I think they lost vision and they're sort of just floating around and hoping like something sticks and occasionally things do. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's enough to keep people coming back. And I also think they were huge in their heyday because they did pivot to becoming all vegan right at the time where there mm. weren't many brands doing that. And a lot of the alternative people that were looking for like really great black eyeliners and purple lipsticks, they a lot of people were, were turning to being vegan they needed vegan products so they mm. fit a niche that just wasn't available whereas that niche is a is i think it now collectively has been fit with um has been taken over by a lot of indie brands i feel like a lot of indie brands have stepped up yeah. and made things a lot more interesting than what kvd beauty does and it's just a little mm. bit they haven't found what works for them in this new sort of format yeah, uh, look, I agree with everything you said there. I also want to say, I think um, KVD or Kendo for KVD make some really good yeah, formulas. They can, yeah. Like they have had some fantastic products over the years. And even in recent years after we saw Kat Von D uh, leave the brand. But 
I feel that an online only uh, shopping experience for makeup is dumb. Um, makeup is one of those products that to know if it's going to work for you, you have to actually like see it in person on your skin, feel the texture, things like that. Um, color matching is almost impossible online. <laughs> your screen or the colors on your screen may vary. Um, that's not something that you want to know mm. when you're buying makeup. It's not helpful. So I think Kat Von D or KVD Beauty is going to be one of those brands that's still around for a few years. But I think seeing them be pulled out of stores earmarks the moment in time where we start to say mm -hmm. goodbye to them. Also, I think Kendo is working on a new brand to bring out and take place of KVD Which Beauty. That's going to be my I guess. reckon that's probably fair. Um, I also think what you, they used to be really about the color makeup and the palettes and the mm. lipsticks, which you can buy online. Whereas now they're more about the base products, which you're right. Like it's very hard to buy that online. Um, so I think they're, um, they're making themselves available to their fans, their international fans, but they are saying goodbye to a new audience. Yes. I feel like they're just riding out the wave of the last of the Mohicans yep. with this brand. Completely. Yeah. All right. My next one. Are these guys still even around? Where is Violet Voss? Yeah. Now, uh, look, their fonts, I look, they, design, they, they, they deserve to die with the font choices because they killed me <laughs> every time. We've saying it from day oh, one. My God. The font is so bad. Look, here's what I will say about Good Violet quality. Boss. In fantastic quality, amazing, like pigment for days and weeks and months and years. And you cannot deny that point. if you are looking for... Oh yeah, fantastic price point. If you're looking for something that's nice and compact, but a generous amount of product, fantastic pigmented products, um, really colorful and bright and fun, Violet Voss has got your back. But they're like the better I quality like Morphe. Oh yeah, I would I would say so, and with a better reputation just yep. across the board with everything. But I have they released anything? I don't recently? know. I haven't heard from them. I mean, maybe they have. Like they haven't messaged me. No, she's not kidding. I don't. <laughs> I have not seen anything about them. I'm she's, having a look now. She's joking. Uh, yeah, they, do, they don't message me. They do have stuff, but it looks the same as they always have had. And, yeah, I, I agree with you. I feel yeah. like they haven't been able to stay relevant enough. But I do think, mm. besides the fact that I haven't seen from them, but they are posting, um, I do think that their quality and price point is what's going to keep them afloat for a while longer. But I do agree with you, yeah. long term... They're not going to be able to compete with other brands that probably just have a better, a wider reputation. Because uh, I think Violet Voss mm. has a really mm -hmm. good reputation. It also makes me think, this is not not on our list, where's um, Viseart gone? Have they released anything? Oh, oh. please hold yeah. Paula. Okay, so they are still uh, releasing yeah. things and posting things on their Instagram and it's up to date. Like they've released a, an image um, in the last 12 hours. Um, but Kat mentioned that it looks like they're re-releasing old stuff or it looks like their old yeah. stuff just sort of re-promoted. And Kat said, um, I don't think they can compete with Natasha Denona, did you say? And I feel like that might be accurate. The thing about Vizart is they were an artistry, like a professional brand. Mm -hmm. They were targeted, like their customers were um, makeup mm -hmm. artists, working makeup artists. And then they were like, well, to stay alive, we have to um, get into consumers. And that was smart and it worked for them. And they really took off. A lot of people liked them. Um, but I'm going to say this, I think their formula is hit or miss mm -hmm. um and i don't i don't think they they have the um the formulas to stay as relevant as they were when they boomed yeah i don't think the repeat customer is necessarily there but i will always say that i love their tiny yes. little edit palettes yeah. they're fantastic in terms of size yeah because i remember i first saw them at makeup artist shows like imats and stuff so they yep. were 
Yep. I, and, and I think they're competing in a, a field that they're not very familiar with, com, like uh, uh, marketing in. Um, but that also takes mm. me to my next brand, which I think is not in trouble in some European places, but definitely internationally. Mm. Inglot. So Inglot again was mm. the place. Like I remember when I was like just out of high school and I was like, I'd walk past an Inglot store because I went in all shopping centers in, in Melbourne pretty much. And you'd be like, oh, I want to make my own palette and I can't afford it. It's so expensive. Mm -hmm. and, it looks, and it was like, you're sort of dream. Yeah. Like this is such a dream. It's like, just, oh, such a like cool thing to do. I really want to do it. And then um, yeah. they've closed all their stores pretty much in um, Australia. Uh, they, they've got their yes. online store wow. in Australia, but I feel like that is going to be closing up soon enough. Again, they were focused to be a makeup artist brand, but then they opened stores and made it consumer sort of some desirable, I suppose. Um, but I mm -hmm. feel like it, they didn't keep relevant and it was very expensive and the build your own thing was sort of not as... Uh, interesting as it once was i think that comes in and out of sort of fashion and also honestly mm -hmm. i think their eyeshadow quality are a little bit hard and dry it's not that great yeah for yep. what they're charging so yep. i was gonna say they, that yeah, i'm glad people you could it. only justify spending that price if it was a tax deduction aka makeup artist uh -huh. but now there are much better formulas out there and they just didn't keep up with it so i don't think they're going anywhere because i think they're originally from where are they from like poland or mm -hmm. something um, I'm actually just having a little look now because with Kat talking Poland, about yes. this, yep. there are there are some things from Inglot that I love, right? And there's actually something that I've been meaning to buy and I was going to go in store and just pick it up. And yeah, Duraline is fantastic. That They're like, yeah, I'm going to have to make an online order because I'm just looking at their stores. The only place in Australia where they still have stores is South Australia and they've got three stores, which means they're probably locked in to contracts and also South Australia probably ain't got a whole lot going on in terms of makeup mm -hmm. stores so maybe they're still doing all right over there all right next up for me is a brand that is still fairly new but I just don't think they're going to make it and I'm not sad about it it's polite society mm -hmm. now polite society is um the newest child of Jared Blandino and Jeremy what's Johnson. his partner's name, Kat? Jeremy Johnson. So after they sold Too Faced to Estee Lauder, is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Um, they went quiet for a little while and then they announced that they were opening up some new brands um, and Polite Society is one of them. I do not think that these guys are going to survive. I definitely think Too Faced yes. will survive because I think they've been around long enough that um, they will have a quiet customer base who has been using their products for a long time. They rely on them. They know them. It's just, it's like, you know, people who um, are still buying from like the actual Estee Lauder brand because that's what they grew up with. Mm -hmm. That's what their Nana used, their mum used, stuff like yeah. that. Um, and I think Too Faced will go that way, but Polite Society, I don't think they will ever create that kind of customer no. base. Their products are Boring. bizarrely childish, but also like visually they look childish, but they're also like targeted at like actual adults. Uh, and I just, they, they've got that sort of, is buying it. that Jared sort of, he thinks he's being cheeky and having like rude names that he thinks yeah. is, Oh, it's so funny. And it's like, you know, we're posh people that like to say, oh, we're, we're fuck you. Like they're just, they're just, he's just, it's cringe for one, but also it just feels like a cheap rip off version of Too Faced where you kind of go, does. well, why not just go to Too Faced and actually buy some, mm, I, I don't know. I think right. it's a trash brand that they should have not yeah. wasted their money in. I, I honestly, I don't this think it also survive. shows that like lightning doesn't strike the same place twice. Like twice. I, I feel like yeah. they thought that it was their mm -hmm. know-how that got them, got Too Faced to where it was. I don't think they realized that a lot of it was probably right place, right time. And I think that they think that they can replicate it and do it again. And I, I definitely do not think they can. Um, the last yeah. one that I want to mention, and I don't actually think this brand is going under, but I thought this is an interesting one to mention because I feel like this could be the cause of many indie brands going under. So oh, yes. Menagerie Cosmetics made an announcement that because of Mokra or the modernization of cosmetics 
Regulation Act of 2022, um, they are no longer going to be putting like red or the vegan pigment that is not eye safe, but they just put it in eyeshadow and everyone does this in the US. Um, they put it yeah. in eyeshadow palettes. They say it's a vegan cruelty free palette, but they say it's a, it's a pressed pigment palette and not safe for the eyes. Now this act has cut down on that you can no longer do that it seems or as easily so they are going to revert back to being um non-vegan eyeshadow palettes i said they're going to make singles and products available for vegans but they can't contain um like obviously originally red pigment was from um what do you call it? crush crush bugs. bugs essentially um so yeah. uh yeah so they they're pretty much uh, doing a backflip on the vegan thing which is interesting because they changed yeah. the name from makeup monsters to menagerie cosmetics made menagerie. it all about an animals and donating proceeds yeah. to animals and i feel like if you're turning away your vegan clientele with the majority of your products you're going to be losing mm. a big base when it comes to this type of brand mm. so i don't know if they're going to go down but i do think it's going to be very problematic for brands like them so i'm curious yeah. watch this space I think, yeah, I think this is interesting. And like Kat said, I think watch this space, but for so many brands, because Carmine, which is That's the, the word. it's crush bugs. Carmine. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, uh, people didn't use it in creating uh, makeup. They use a synthetic um, alternative. And like Kat said, it's not eye safe. But it, it, the thing is, um, it, it actually technically is eye safe. Like in Europe, in Australia, it's, it's eye safe. Just, it's just not no one's paid for it to be approved in the US so it's deemed to Correct. be not eye safe because no one's put it paid for the testing and no one wants to fork yep. that bill uh, uh, fork up for that bill when um, everyone can then benefit from it being um, eye safe and all they just decided yes. to do was skirt the legislation by making a warning on it so that's what they were doing doesn't mean it wasn't right. eye safe it just wasn't a, they hadn't tested it it hasn't, it hasn't, been, hasn't tested. been tested yeah. yes in the US yeah. and i, I I think it's very interesting. I, I actually want to look a bit more into this um, because I hadn't heard of the Mokra thing, but it could, oh, I don't know, it could have an mm -hmm. impact on the beauty industry. What I will say is I think it is responsible that Menagerie are being yes. transparent about it. And I respect that so much more um, because they are, they're telling people. Mm -hmm. It's not going to come out as some like, big controversy that they actually have had carmine in their eyeshadows uh for x amount of time and they didn't tell people mm -hmm. and how dare you so yeah uh, i'll be interested to see what happens um with that all right so my last one and we may actually uh, sort of trickle on from this as well uh laura lee los angeles yeah i just don't i don't see this surviving um, along with, I suppose, a lot of influencer brands, there is one other in particular that I'm like, I'm surprised it's still a thing and I think it's holding on for dear life. But the thing about Laura Lee Los Angeles is um, I consider them similar to um, like Manny's brand, but not... It's virtually identical. Yes, but I... <laughs> like the products and everything about it is so the same but again it's like the vision and the drive is not behind it like it is with manny's brand i think manny's brand is going to keep going for quite some time but laura lee i just i don't like i don't get the same conviction yeah. of that brand she, and I don't she lacks passion for it it's pretty much just like a second rate lunar beauty but with mm. more wearable shades and even using yeah. him as a collaboration to sell products. So I think it's on death's door. I think it worked mm. for her when she was at her peak of fame. Now mm. no one really knows who she is. If you talk about, you know, talk to the younger generation getting into the beauty community, they're going to be like, who the, who the fuck is that? So I don't <laughs> think that, yeah, I agree with you. I think it's, there's a many influencer brands that I think are going to be um, not worth pursuing financially for them. But I think mm. this is one that's just like, why is it still here? Yeah, another one that's similar to that is Dominique Cosmetics. Like, I don't know. Do they still, is that still a thing? Does anyone remember them? But the big one for me, I have to mention it, uh, Florence by Mills. Yeah. Like, that, that's 
that ship has sailed. So also, she started much. that when she was underage. How much are you like? Who is still passionate about what they started when they were like sixteen? Not me. So no. I just don't. I think that was capitalizing on her fame at a particular I agree. time. Yeah. So this is um, Millie Bobby Brown. Um, yes. It's her brand. So I feel like this is another one that's just going to fade off into the distance or get sold so. to someone and then just get sort of like <sighs> bastardized. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Some breaking news uh, before we wrap up this episode. Ben Nye has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy to lift the burden of fighting talc laws. Now, from what I understand, these are linked to the Johnson & Johnson's baby powder issues that have been going on for a long time. And this is a way for them to protect the brand going forward so that they're not basically sued into oblivion. They do plan on continuing to sell products, stock products. Um, they're not getting rid of any of their employees from what I understand. So hopefully it keeps them afloat. All right, guys, so that's where we're gonna wrap this up. We would love it if you would jump in the comments and let us know your thoughts on any of the brands that we mentioned here. If you have any other supporting comments that you wanna to add to the discourse of this video, feel free. Comment section is all yours. Um, and if you have any predictions of brands that you think are gonna go under, let us know what they are. I am gonna put in one little stipulation here. If you're going to say, like, I think Mac's going under, who buys Mac? I haven't thought about Mac forever or like Estee Lauder or Longcom or something like that. I want you to remember that these brands have been around for a long time and a lot of people who are buying these, they're not like they're not in this community. They are quiet consumers and they yeah. would make up the majority of consumers and they would have for, you know, the history of beauty and they will for the coming history of beauty so i challenge you to think outside of the box when it comes to those sort of brands because i think mm. they will withstand the test of time because they yep. have for a reason yeah uh also if there are a lot of suggestions uh, we had a, a list that we cut down so if you want to see a mm. part two, two we're more than happy to do another one of these another month mm -hmm. um because it's been fun chatting about it so um, actually let us know if you're interested little idea with that potentially if you guys let us know your thoughts down in the comment section we could do a video yep. chatting about what you guys think um yep. and let you know our thoughts around what you think as well so Good idea. we do hope you enjoyed it um give it a like thumbs up like subscribe if you're not do the youtubey things and uh we'll catch you in the next one <laughs> bye, bye.